Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I thank the organizers for the opportunity. Basically, what I am presenting is part of my work on open source, open innovation commons. What I propose to do is now I will make a presentation, but to all of you, I will send the papers I have written on this so that you will have a better idea. And I won't repeat what I have discussed in the papers here. This is more to give an overview and then to discuss whether this could be an alternative IP regime in case of plant breeding and then plant varieties or even agriculture. Basically, you know, open source, the key co core concepts came from software, but now they are being also applied in life sciences. The idea is you share and innovate, and you will not block others from building upon your innovation, nor you will enroach upon others and then enclose it. So open source came up with the GPL, or what is called a general public license, now it is version 3, and then there are licenses derived from that, which are more similar to GPL, but depending upon the context, they use it. As an example of open source application, you have the open source drug discovery project in India. Then you have this SNP consortium, then NAPMA project, and a couple of other projects in life sciences or in post genome biosciences. And Cambia in Australia and BIOS in Australia, they try to implement a sort of open source license, particularly in plant biotechnology, particularly in biotechnology. Open innovation is a strategy or a you know, way of approaching innovation from closed innovation. Open innovation basic core is that no firm today or no individual organization can today claim that it has got all the resources to solve the problems it encounters, which means that you open up, you are open up to both ideas, sharing resources and also to working with others. So users, suppliers and others can contribute and encourage out of the think box thinking. To give you a small example as to how this could operate, Apple's idea of the original iPad and iPhone, they came from an outsider. But Apple grabbed that opportunity, then it constituted a team of some 30 people working on that, and then they built a whole lot of products uh, based on this idea. And then Procter & Gamble also found that often they got new ideas about projects and then products from outsiders, suppliers or users. So they took a lot of initiatives from them and then they have launched a thing called Innocentive where you know people can really give up, uh, can contribute uh, suggestions. And if, if you go through nature, you would know that there's a common challenge every uh, time they have advertised. This is a challenge who those who come with this best solution will be given this much money as a reward. In open innovation, the key point is that IP rights are acknowledged and then claimed and then enforced but then they are used with mutual consent. So open innovation is more like you know coming together to solve a problem by putting together the resources and then solving the problem becomes the priority. As a part of open innovation framework, now we can talk about, talk about crowdsourcing, crowdfunding and aggregation of ideas and views. Now these crowdsourcing and crowdfunding have emerged as major sources of both ideas and funding. And we also know that aggregation of ideas and views is now undertaken by governments, by public sector authorities, or even by organizations like UN. UN actually now commissioned a report where they crowdsourced background papers and then they developed that as a report. So these are all basically the idea of open innovation is that you collaborate because no one has got the right resources and the right knowledge to solve all the problems. Then comes commons. Commons you all know that the debate has been the work of Garrett uh, Hardin, who talked about the tragedy of the commons. But Eleanor Ostrom and her collaborators, they did a very pioneering work, and I won't go into details here, and they demonstrated that <coughs> this is not the only option. Tragedy of commons need not always occur. And they found that in practice, what is happening is a totally different case. For example, in case of common pool resources and natural resources and community-based management, the tra tragedy of commons is averted and avoided because these resources are nearly neither fully private or individually owned nor fully controlled by government. They are more like communal owned, communally shared and communally managed resources. Which means that there are different types of commons possible, semi-commons, protected commons and then knowledge commons. Carol Rose has written uh, some very interesting papers on these different types of commons. Although uh, Strom's work repeatedly pointed out that they are very suitable for resource management, later on people like Eike Bankler and then people who are working on open source, they have developed the idea of commons into a different perspective and took it up to knowledge commons and then for sharing other purposes. Recent scholarship from uh, a set of scholars have demonstrated that 
in fact there have been crossed border common sharing arrangements like sharing of water resources airways in europe and then there's a very interesting book cosmopolitan commons from mit press that gives a good idea that how the idea of commons can be approached in a very cosmopolitan way in a very systematic way than merely for natural resource management which also means that governments can come together and then develop commons for example uh, the, now there are uh, 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 initiatives that bring in traditional communities together to regulate access to their traditional knowledge and then implement access and benefit sharing through biocultural protocols the only thing is that commons have got long history and to reconfigure them in different contexts is a challenge so the commons can be global regional or local but in case of plant genetic resources let us understand that common heritage and commons are different because common heritage means open access for all free access for all without any restriction whereas commons are not always like that commons have regulated access community management or with rules and regulations for both access contribution and sharing the convention on biological diversity negated the common heritage idea and then it asserted national sovereignty over genetic resources but then that did not per se result in commons if you look at a very recent example you all know the question of sharing of the virus samples between indonesia and the who and other resource centers and then there were controversies over sharing of the benefits so one way of this has been solved is that to develop a semi commons where you know you contribute but then you also have access and benefit sharing rights and then the international plant treaty developed a sort of commons for sharing genetic resources with access benefit sharing under the multilateral system which applies for the 64 crops specified in the schedule 1 but in case of most plant genetic resources they are either privately owned or under national sovereignty and those under cjai are held in common trust by fao which means that fao holds them in common trust for all the human kind but what has happened is that both conventional biological diversity and trips brought a sea change in plant genetic resources management and ownership so pointing out this david victor and carl rostolia wrote a paper in 2004 they mapped the regime complexes in plant genetic resources and identified the shifts over the years today conventional biological diversities uh, diversity trips it pg for a and others have created a complex regime on pgrs while the recent addition is nagoya protocol which also is very much related to access and benefit sharing so when these regime regimes become more complex it results in many overlaps and contentions over applying one or another or both or whichever is su- suitable trips you all know that opened up a lot of options i won't go into that and then what happens we should more bother about is that what exactly is innovation in plant genetic resources there have been informal innovation and exchanges then we have had plan- formal plant breeding <coughs> backed by science and development of hybrids plant uh, breeders rights and patents but agriculture biotechnology took that a different level which means that more patents and then two or three uh, uh, mode of production for plant genetic resources particularly plant varieties so the pgr renovations have actually now sh- have shifted from more towards stronger ip rights with innovation controlled by in, uh, industry and very limited for full uh, role for public sector but there could be another model where innovation could be based on open source open innovation commons we can use the open source for model for innovation and licensing which means that one can contribute and get protect the contribution no free riding open innovation can be a good model for organizing innovation which means that public sector private sector farmers and others can join hands and then commons hold this innovation as commons with rules for access use and allow ip in such a way that enclosure or misappropriation is not allowed and germ plasm per se is not patented use different forms of licensing there could be non exclusive licensing that could be humanity license to share and in fact some of the universities have developed varieties of licenses to specifically ensure that you know that whatever they hold as ip is not uh, is available for further use but it is not held back on account of extreme royalty demands 
so innovation for common good or for farmers is possible but this should, that should not be a free good which others i mean a corporate sector can easily enclose and in case of synthetic biology now we have a bio bricks model which is evolving which has got in more to more towards you know people contributing to development of synthetic biology and then agreeing for some common norms a very promising open source project is the open source drug discovery project which is underway in india it is led by the council on scientific industry research Uh, but it's global in collaboration it is the contributions are governed by agreements and contributions are available as open for others to innovate it's like click and wrap arrangement you contribute and then you also access through a licensing industry academia public sector labs and private sector have come together the initial target is to develop uh, drugs for tb affordable drugs for tb open source uses the this project uses the open source model for licensing and access and open innovation for collaboration and organizing of mode of innovation in case of plant genetic resources one way to look at them is that look them as a common pool resource from common uh, heritage of mankind to common concern mediated by private rights and sovereign rights is the short history of plant genetic resources but between common heritage uh, co- Map and approach, and then the full private control access approach. There could be diversity of approaches. We can have a common pool of plant genetic resources based on access and benefit sharing, equity, and promoting innovation. So the question would be, what is the role for IP in this? Common pool uh, pool means regulated access to ABS. Common pool can be managed by an entity that could hold resources in trust, define it, defend it from misappropriation, support its growth, and sustainable use. this common pool can protect farmers rights in and the right to innovate will be assured and then farmers contributions to this common pool will be under equitable access and benefit sharing system so in situ production can be encouraged by this common pool which will acknowledge farmers as custodians farmers will be allowed to collaborate with breeders and both can access pgr under regulated access farmers needs can be prioritized but then farmers cannot expect that it will be a free service always so way back in 2004 when i wrote my phd thesis i go back i developed a model called biolunux the biolunux is based on open source approach linking farmers plant breeders and others in this the plant germ plasm is made available under a license similar to gpl so that plant breeders uh, can have access but no exclusive api ip rights on pgr or derivatives will be granted it links participatory plant breeding with farmers and access farmers varieties makes as available innovation under gpl it is compatible with plant breeders rights and farmers rights reasonable royalty for innovation but no no monopoly pricing and then assess royalty in terms of value of innovation to farmers it could be agri- applied for agri biotechnology but with some modifications So this model considers PGR as commons and then applies open source model. It could be used for open innovation model also. This has not been tested because it was more developed as a theoretical model, but people have developed further it and it has been discussed in the literature. So the question would be how to share. There are some interesting examples which I can cite, but I don't have the time for it. A recent paper by N. Warthman and C. Chiralo actually comes up with a model for. public license for information concerning crop crop germ plasm i think this model can be really useful in our discussions on ip and innovation in plant genetic resources but you know there are a lot of issues which we need to really work on practical issues theoretical issues and then issues in organizing i think these things we need to have a long discussion and then identify where what exactly is the problem how it could be tackled and which could be appropriate mode of doing it in my summary we need new models in ip in agriculture and plant breeding and innovation with the right uh, right model of ip is a must and ip narrow and ip broad or should we think of ip for innovation with limited rights and responsibility i would p- take this idea of responsibility more like the idea of responsible research and innovation and then link that with plant breeding and agriculture so which means that responsible element of ip for common good is preferable over ip for exclusion and then changes challenges like climate change call for a different approach in using ip in agriculture i have discussed it in my paper where we can use this open innovation model for ip management in 
uh, agriculture in the context of climate change. So with this, I uh, stop here. Thank you for listening.